It's a tradition that Tesla has had with previous models or products that they've been rolling out. The last one that they did that with was the Cybertruck about two years ago or so. And when they decide that they're ready to basically transition the project from the engineering department, which is the development part, to the production part, mm -hmm. they take their prototype or their whatever, their latest version of that, and they take it to In-N-Out Burger, and it's a way of announcing to the world, hey, we've made a pretty significant milestone. We've made a kind of dramatic change within the program, and it's symbol symbolic. We're going to go closer to production now versus just developing a prototype. So it's really a great thing to see. There's been this endless back and forth debate on steering wheel versus no yeah. steering wheel. <laughs> We've had Farzad and Omar exchanging barbs and some pretty hilarious memes back and forth. And that is, you've had a couple interesting posts on it I wanted to highlight. One was just in, in your most recent video talking about Elon more or less settled this with uh, when he was on the All In Pod and yeah. Jason Calacanis <laughs> was like, hey, why don't you just launch this with the cyber cab? And he's no, we're not, basically we're not gonna do that or launch this with a steering wheel. But then you also posted more recently on whether Tesla might be trading off some short-term versus long-term optimizations yeah. so without kind of concluding one way or the other. I'm curious if you could maybe tee this up for the audience who maybe didn't see your okay. post. So I think it's a very interesting way to look at it. Yeah, it has certainly generated a lot of conversation, <laughs> a lot of passion on all different sizes. But one of the interesting things, just for a backstory, is that the question of whether or not Cyber Cab, which is designed to be an autonomous vehicle from the start, two-seater, used in like a robo-taxi type fleet. And there's been some suggestion of the ability for owners to buy them too, and then either use them for their own purposes or enter them into the fleet. So we've had this discussion ever since the 1010 event when it was uh, unveiled out at the Warner Brothers studio, which is just over a year ago, which is hard to believe it's been just a year and all of this has happened. But uh, along the way- crazy, actually. I didn't quite realize that. But yeah, it's been over a year. So yeah, that's wild. Yeah, yeah. I had a fortunate to, opportunity to go there and it was just crazy. I don't think anybody really knew what we were going to see. And then, of course, the robo taxi and with the cyber cab driving around on that closed loop was the centerpiece of what was going on there, along with the Optimus and the robust Robovan, whatever it's going to be called now. So a lot of really forward-looking products. And also it was, I think, Tesla's signature or putting the flag down that they have decided that they are going to embrace autonomy and start moving more towards robots, whether they're on wheels, whether they're on legs or whatever. And so it was a really huge event and it was just over a year ago. And I think sometimes people think it was a lot longer than that, but, but after that event was over, you know, the inevitable started happening as you started seeing cyber cabs in different places, they were displaying them, people were getting a lot of inputs. And I started seeing them at Giga Texas and they were doing a lot of testing, driving them around the factory to get data to, for a while they had a chase car behind them. And I got a lot of drone shots of that driving around. And of course, a lot of people were interested in it, but I inadvertently started a bit of the firestorm about the steering wheel because I actually caught pictures of cyber cabs with the steering wheel. <laughs> and, uh, so that's really put which, which I mean, flame. I think like, that seems to be a bit of an overreaction though. Just as an example, I was at the X takeover in California, in the Bay area earlier this year. Yeah. And you know, when the cyber cab showed up, like all the Tesla employees covered it because presumably they were taking the steering wheel out. Yeah. There was no other reason to like shield that sort of thing. But I think we've known for a while that at least in some of these pre-production versions that there'd be a steering wheel, but yeah, I guess at the, the... that event right before Lars went up for his discussion that they had on the stage, I was standing next to him backstage and uh, it was funny to me because he actually knew who I was because of the videos and stuff, which I thought was pretty interesting, <laughs> That's cool. but he mentioned, he goes, yeah, and you're the one that got the picture with the steering wheel. <laughs> and he goes, that's just an engineering one. We just use it to do testing. It's not what we have planned. So. Even at that point, he was pretty clear on that. I think Franz has been clear on that. Tesla has been clear on that. E Elon's been clear on that. The only thing that just added a little bit more fire again was Robin Denholm recently out at Times Square when they were doing a demonstration of the robots in the cyber cab. Bloomberg interviewed her and she said that if necessary, because of regulations, they would have an option of putting a steering wheel onto it. 
So this is, hopefully this backstory is giving you an idea of why is this being talked about now? And, uh, and then getting to your point, what I was talking about with the short and long-term interplay that this has really brought up. Yeah. It's, I think that the Denholm's comments on this, to me, it just seemed a bit like almost a throwaway comment. Not there was some huge plan there. It, it kind of reminded me of Elon's comments a while ago when people were really criticizing the Cybertruck design. He was like, listen, if it doesn't sell well, we'll just design a more traditional looking truck. That, right. that wasn't an indication that there were plans to build a traditional style truck. And I think similarly here, it's like, yeah, you could actually pretty easily put a steering wheel in yeah. pedals, but that's not, that doesn't mean that that's a plan or there's some new variation that's unveiled. I don't know. I, I've been a bit confused by Farzad having a victory dance on this topic, to, to be honest yeah. with you. <laughs> <laughs> to me, whether or not it has a steering wheel in and of itself isn't really super important to me or what I'm super concerned about. But to me, what it seems like is it's uncovered a few more deeper subjects that people have been worried about or talking about within Tesla community. And one of those, there's a lot, but one of them is on the consumer side, expectations, what kind of vehicle I could purchase and that lower cost kind of car. And what it seems to me is that there is a huge demand for, or at least there's a lot of people saying that they would really like to have a lower cost car, lower than even the standard edition three that just got unveiled. And so I think it uncovered that kind of question or that concern within mm -hmm. the Tesla community. And then the other one that it uncovered is more on the shareholder following the company. And that is this whole strategic shift to autonomy that was really announced back last year on 1010. And we're seeing that kind of pervade throughout all of its products and the direction that Tesla wants to go. And the concerns that I think investors have on that is one, is that really the right direction for the company or not? And two, how do you make that actually happen? And what happens if there's bumps on the road to that? Yeah. And I think those two kind of questions got pulled up, the bandaid got ripped off and those were highlighted with the steering wheel and the cyber cab kind of thing. Yeah, I think there's this perennial debate among a lot in the Tesla community of wanting to maximize sales in the short to medium term and mm -hmm. trying to offset or like maximally segmentize your, your all your different people who would be interested in the car and like trying to just increase the TAM of by having a, many different form factors of vehicles. As far as I can tell where Elon's head is, I think he's just more of the mindset of let's burn the ships and go all in on autonomy. If yeah. we can't find, if we can't solve autonomy, we don't deserve to be a trillion dollar company. And so let's not waste engineering talent and resources on some fifth form factor vehicle that's, you know, might sell reasonably well when the real opportunity and like the significant earnings power, cash flow power, all that is on drastically lowering the cost per mile by cyber cab and really just going all in on autonomy. Yeah. Do you think he's, how does that kind of framing of the situation sit with you? I think Elon is the ultimate change agent and he's also looking into the future and he's trying to see what will the future look like with these particular parameters. And if we are able to get enough of the AI, the supporting infrastructure, the software, the data, do the training and be able to feed product or field products that can maximize that and the implications that would have for our society, not just Tesla, then why would you do an intermediate step? And let's just go all the way that way. And we've seen that with him on things like Starlink. He said, we're going to do this. So he's just, he got the ability to launch them. He started launching them. At first, people were not sure why. And now it's dominating these, the system. And we're talking about data centers and other stuff that you could do with them, which is not what we thought earlier on. It's almost, I don't know if it was Henry Ford or the thing is if you ask customers what they want, they just want what they have, but a better version of what they have. They don't mm -hmm. have that vision of what could be if we have something completely different. And so I think he is definitely like that. And that's what he's doing with all of his companies and particularly with Tesla. And so it's a... Uh, it's a big risk, potential big reward, but there will be challenges along the way. And I think it's those challenges along the way that, that people are focusing on right now, rather than that destination.
Yeah. I think one of the best examples of this in the past is Elon's stance on LiDAR. He's like, we could probably get better results in the short term if we incorporated LiDAR, but in the long term, you're going to have to figure out how to read these signs anyways. And so why not focus on the goal maximum, which is getting vision to be so good that it can be excellent at all the stuff LiDAR is excellent at. And then you, by the way, you'll also be able to actually read what's on a sign and have right. all the other benefits of vision. To me, he's not afraid of taking the hard path. And I think that's another case here where yeah, he's prioritizing the goal maximum, which is just getting to autonomy as, as fast as possible. Yeah. I know that within, we've, it's not just me seeing this or hearing this, a lot of people have seen it. I think Walter Isaac's book, Isaacman's book talked about this too, where there's a lot of internal discussions within Tesla about what is the path forward. And you have Elon pushing for the ultimate future. And if we have these three things and we put them together, this is the future that we're going to have. And that's where we're going to go. And then you have others that are saying, what about a transition plan or a bridge? And how do we get there? So there is that interplay that's going on. One of the problems, and I think what Elon's trying to get at is if you come up with a interim solution, that's actually pretty good. That may become the permanent solution and it make it harder for you to continue to do yeah. that transition later on. So he wants to just skip right over that and go right to that final solution. And then you can work on all the details and refine it as you go versus having to undo a large number of logistics infrastructure, factory in infrastructure, hardware infrastructure, contracts, all those things that you would do to get that interim solution. Now you have to unwind all that so you can go on. So I think he's just trying to leapfrog over that. And when you do that, it does, you know, create opportunity and challenges along the way. For what I do, one of the things I do with the drones at Giga Texas, and Giga Texas is going to play a major role with this because we have the Cortex data center at the south end. They expanded the building for that and all that, uh, the H100 uh, GPUs, the A4 uh, inference computers that they have with all of the work that they're doing to do all the training. That is necessary if you're going to go to this AI infrastructure. They're improving all of the infrastructure, the electrical systems, the mega packs, all the things that you would need to support that all is going on at Giga Texas. And cyber cab production is going to be at Giga Texas. Me being there and seeing the stuff that I see, the reason why I look at things like going out to the staging yards, what equipment's being delivered, where is it going into the factory, how much of it's going, it gives us that insight on not only how well are they progressing towards that goal, but are they actually putting their money where their mouth is and are they doing that goal? And the answer is absolutely yes. You can see it every day through my videos. If people are questioning, is Tesla really committed to the AI future or not? All you have to do is look at my videos and you can see the amount of infrastructure, the amount of money, the amount of time, the amount of space that they're dedicated and reshaping within the factory is, this is where they're gonna go. And beyond that is, they are not building, they have capability that if they need to make adjustments, what Robin was saying, they can, but they're really building everything with the idea that we've got the product, we know where we're going to go. We can see even late prototypes driving around now, and it matches up with the ones that they just took to in and out. So it tells me that not only are they all in on it, but they are in, they have already installed all of that infrastructure. They're doing the training, the testing on the lines now. They're hiring the people in. They're doing all those things that is necessary to hit that production timeline, which is right now to start production in the second quarter of 2026. And I say that because they're not going to start at a million cars a year. It's going to be a ramp and it's going to be slow at first. They're going to work out some issues. They're still going to be working out issues between now and then, but it will be a ramp up over the year and then probably not until 27 when it really hits its stride. But to do all of those things and to be prepared to hit those milestones is I don't think we're at the time where they're going to be redoing the products to start changing them. We're going to add more doors. We're going to lengthen it. We're going to put steering wheels, all that stuff. I think that they don't want to do that at all. I think that they believe that they have a path ahead that will allow that to happen. And I think what Robin was saying was more of a backup in case over, say, the next 18 months, if we find out that the market says no, that they have a backup plan.